Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I'm doing a follow-up video. A few days ago, I posted a video using the DJI Mavic Air with the DJI goggles, the original goggles, OG. And it's been a pretty popular video with a lot of good follow-up questions in the comments, so I thought I'd address a few of those questions today because I don't feel like I did in the last video. So stay tuned and we'll go through them. So as I mentioned, a few days ago, I published a video with the goggles and the Mavic Air, just kind of showing that you can fly the Mavic Air with the goggles, which is true. Uh, lots of great questions came up, and I'm going to go through them right now and try to answer as many as I can and help people understand whether it's worth investing in the goggles or the Mavic Air if you already have the goggles. I am going to just say right off the bat, uh, they don't do OcuSync, and the best experience you can have with the goggles is with the Mavic Pro because of OcuSync, but you have a pretty good experience uh, similar with the Mavic Air so far. But let me answer the questions and then we can come to a conclusion at the end. First question was maximum uh, and minimum circumference of the goggles. In other words, how big around are they and how big a head or small a head will they fit on? Uh, I'll measure them and I'll tell you in just a second. Number two, do they work with glasses? Uh, I believe they do, but I brought some sunglasses, even though it's kind of dreary today. I'm going to try those and see how that does. Uh, number three, can you run the phone and the goggles at the same time and have the uh, heads up display or telemetry in the goggles and on the phone as well as a live view? I think you can, but I haven't tried it. So last time I flew without my phone because I wanted to see if you could fly with just the goggles. So we're going to try that. Uh, can you do smart flight modes with the goggles on? Going to find that out. So the next question, is there a range limitation when you have the phone connected? Um, I don't know. I'm going to try it. I don't think there is, but I know when I had just the goggles on, it would only fly a certain distance away from me and a certain distance up. I suppose that's because they're assuming you don't have line of sight on it if you're just wearing the goggles and nobody's looking at the phone. Uh, the next one is just the signal degrada degradation using the phone. Um, how far can you go away before you start to see really bad signal? Next, is there a fixed wing mode? And I believe the answer to that is no for the Mavic Air. I'm going to double check, but for now I'm going to say no, there is no fixed wing mode with double Mavic Air. Uh, next is head tracking. I thought the answer to that was no, but after doing a little research, it looks like maybe you can do head tracking with the Mavic Air. I'm going to find out. And then the last question was, can you record to the SD card uh, in the goggles and get telemetry data and that whole heads up display? I know the answer to that is no. The slot in the goggles is actually designed as a playback slot. So if you are flying with your uh, Mavic Air, Mavic Pro, uh, Phantom, whatever, you can take the card out of your drone and put it in the goggles and view videos or pictures in the goggles. It's a, strictly a playback and not a recording for uh, live flight. So just keep that in mind. You can't record with the original goggles. You can't record the video or the telemetry using the SD slot. So. I answered a couple of them, uh, but let's go back to the beginning and uh, go through and see how many more we can answer. So minimum and maximum head size for the goggles. Well, let's just measure them and see. So if you've never seen the goggles or used them, the way they adjust is with this little wheel back here. And when you spin this wheel, they get bigger with these metal plates. And these are metal, so they're pretty strong. And it gets smaller. It cranks in and actually brings the whole set of goggles in. Also, just as an aside, the proper way to wear the goggles is not what most people do. A lot of people just set them on top of their head like this. You're actually supposed to put the bottom down like this and then kind of loosen them to where they kind of fall down onto your head like so and then tighten them up a little bit. So they're a little bit of an angle going downward like this is the ideal uh, circumstance. So in terms of their size and circumference, I've got a pretty big head and you can see that's how far out they are for, to fit on me and they've got a little bit more they can go. So the maximum, which is what they're at now, and I'm gonna try my best to do this with a tape measure. Okay, uh, this isn't exactly scientific, but I'm estimating the maximum uh, circumference around the inside of this to be 27 inches. And I'll convert that to centimeters. Uh, it's just under 27 inches. I'll convert that to centimeters on the screen. Um, I realize it didn't look like it was right, but I basically held it down all the way in until it got to the end, so I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Now let's go to the minimum. Okay, uh, doing my best to make this spread out inside. It looks like it's just over 20 inches. So just under 27 for the max, just over 20 for the minimum. 
And again, I'll put centimeters up on the screen. So uh, measure your head, and if your head happens to be smaller than 20 and larger than 27, these probably won't work for you, but just as a point of reference, my head is just over 23 inches around, just kind of at the top. So again, not super scientific, but at least it gets you in the ballpark and you can see what uh, they work with. Okay, so the next question was, will they work with glasses? Uh, I happen to have some sunglasses right here in my pocket. They are pretty small form factor. They're not uh, really big glasses, but I'm just gonna try them on, turn it on and see how well I can see, of course, accounting for the tint. So let's take a look. So there's me wearing glasses with these on. And aside from the fact that they're dark, I can see just fine. And they fit inside here just fine. It's not a very bright day, but I can see the entire heads up display. I have no loss of peripheral vision. Uh, they work just fine. So I think my answer on the glasses would be, if they're not really big glasses, they'll probably work. And again, sunglasses, it would be pointless to wear sunglasses in here as I'm doing, but I just, I don't have glasses, so that's why I use these. So answer is yes, unless they're really big uh, glasses that you have. Okay, so first thing we're gonna test is whether or not we can fly with the goggles and the phone at the same time, meaning getting a signal telemetry and live view from both at once. I believe you can, but let's find out. Okay, so so far it looks like I was wrong. I connected the phone first and then uh, the goggles. And as soon as I plugged the goggles in, the phone signal disappeared. Now, I did see a comment from somebody about hot swapping them, um, which I'm trying to do right now. Let's see if I can get both at once. Currently, I see the signal in the goggles, but I don't see the signal in the phone. So it looks like you can't use the phone and the goggles at the same time, um, at least to get a live view. I just plugged the goggles back in. It says disconnected, and I see them here. Nope, won't connect. It's connected here, won't connect here. So I'm guessing what happens is the, uh, the control must only have the ability to output uh, from one port at a time. It's either outputting from this side port, which goes to the phone, or it's outputting from the bottom port, which goes to the um, goggles. Not sure why that is, but uh, that, that's a big surprise for me. I thought that you could do both at once. So uh, thanks to whoever mentioned that to me, because I wouldn't have known to even test that, or I would have been frustrated. Okay, so it appears today that the uh, there are no range limitations. I am now almost 250 meters away and going up to about 100 meters in height. And all I can see is gray, so I'm actually not liking this very much. I'm going to turn around and uh, I'm going to go down a little bit so that it's less uh, foggy. It's just really foggy today as you can probably see in the video. But my point is that the uh, range and height limitation don't seem to be uh, affected now. And it might be because I plugged in the, um, plugged the phone in when I started. Okay, so I've just done a little bit of poking around in the menu and I wish I could show it to you, but it's just not a really a good way to do that. Um, you can do tap to fly, but I don't see any other intelligent flight modes uh, built into it uh, in the goggles. No other options for like orbit or for uh, asteroid or boomerang or anything like that. So I think you have to do those with your phone. I don't think you can do those with the goggles. So next thing is head tracking. So let's see uh, if we can make it head track. So I updated all my firmware and I put on the goggles and I tried it just a minute ago. And the way you do head tracking is you actually swipe two fingers down on the side of the goggles. That brings you into a menu that allows head tracking and you select what kind of head tracking you want to do. You can either do flight head tracking where the drone actually rotates based on how you rotate your head or you can do just tilt head tracking where the gimbal tilts up and down. 
Now remember, um, because of the way this gimbal is positioned, this gimbal actually does not rotate left and right. So you can't look left and right and have the gimbal rotate, but have the drone keep flying the same direction. This uh, gimbal will only uh, rotate up and down with head tracking. So that's okay though, it's actually a pretty cool experience. All right, so let's go ahead and fire this guy up. I'm actually gonna stay under the cover. Um, there's a clear line of sight between me and the outside from this cover. It's not, um, it's not enclosed, it's, it's open. So I'm gonna take advantage of that clear line of sight, fly out that direction, make sure I can see the drone as well as see it in the goggles, and just kinda see how far it gets before it starts to break up. Now there's a big uh, farm field over there, so I feel pretty confident that I'm not gonna be putting anybody or anything in danger. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the goggles. Fire up the remote. Fire up the Mavic Air. Now I'm actually not sure if the order matters. Um, I doubt it. It's probably once it all sinks, it all sinks, but um, we'll see if there's any issues. I'm not seeing anything yet in the goggles, but I still have a red light on my uh, remote. So once I get a green light on the remote, that's when I should start to see something. Green light, and now I see a live signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and record on the quad. Okay, the quad is recording. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually um, turn on the head tracking. Uh, and as I said, it's raining slightly, it's let up a little bit. So you swipe down with two fingers and go over to head tracking. I'm gonna go head tracking gimbal, select that. And now as I tilt my head up and down, you can see the gimbal tilts up and down. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna do line of sight for takeoff just to make sure everything's good. And then uh, I'll switch over to the goggles for uh, my flight test. So here we go. As I said, it's fairly windy out there. Go ahead and throw the goggles on. I'm over that field I was talking about now. And I'm gonna do the head tilting. And you can see how it follows. Now I'm still set in meters. I know that annoyed some people uh, before, but that's just how I'm set, so deal with it. Uh, wind is pretty high right now. I'm gonna have to check what the wind is with my uh, wind app on my phone after this. I probably should have checked beforehand. So actually, I'm now getting limited by my distance that I can fly. Wind too strong, fly with caution, is what it says up here. Uh, I'm gonna tilt my head down and look at that car as it goes by. So I'm not actually sure what's different about this flight versus the last flight that is stopping me from going more than, uh, it looks like about 30 meters high and 100 meters in distance. Yeah, it says max altitude reach. So 30 meters high would be 100 feet and um, 95 meters in distance, which would be 300 feet away. Um, last time I was able to go further, and so let me see what's, uh, what's going on with that. I'm going to actually bring it back and land it, plug in the phone, and then hot swap it and see if that makes a difference. So turn it around here. See where we're at. We're at a sports complex. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip the goggles up and land it line of sight. And it's a little bit wet. All right, just stopped recording. Uh, you can see the top of it's just a little bit wet and it was definitely windy out there. Let me see what the wind speed actually is. Okay, it looks like 18 mile an hour winds right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually unplug the goggles for a minute, plug in the phone and then swap them out and see if that gives me the extra range uh, beyond the 100 meters that it's letting me go right now. So go ahead and un take off the goggles for a moment. 
unplug them, take my phone case off. Okay, looks like everything's good on the flight. Everything's good there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the goggles and unplug the phone. Do the hot swap, so to speak. Okay, put the goggles back on and I can see everything and I'll go ahead and start recording on the on the quad again. Go ahead and enter uh, or take off line of sight. Now let's see if it'll go a little further away. All right, it's going a lot further away now. Yeah, I'm already at 160 meters away. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on head tracking. Let's try the uh, head tracking flight and see what that does. Okay, that rotates the whole quad. So when I turn my head, it rotates. Okay, that's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue flying away. And you can see as I rotate my head, the quad follows. All right, I am coming up on, so I am 30 meters high. I'm gonna go up to about 50 meters. And again, just see how far I get before I start to lose signal. Now, because the signal is going to the remote control, I would think it would be about the same distance as the phone which uh, I got two, me two kilometers out of it before. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm half a kilometer away and I still got a crystal clear picture. Because it's so windy, I'm not going to uh, go more than half a kilometer away. I'm gonna come on back. So I'm doing all the yaw motions with the head and I've got a crystal clear picture, like I said. No dropouts at all. All right, that's good. We're at 250 meters now. Yeah, I think I'm actually over here. Okay. Should start to hear it here in a minute. Yep, I can hear it. 110 meters. Okay. Go ahead and flip it out of sport mode and land it line of sight. Okay, because of all the wind, I had to stand up to uh, make that landing so that I didn't uh, hit myself and also didn't block the sensors. But here it is, back safe and sound. So that's it. You can see that you can use the goggles with the Mavic Air and also that uh, you can do head tracking with the Mavic Air. You can't use your goggles and your phone at the same time, unfortunately, because you can either use the side port or the bottom port. It won't output uh, signal to both at the same time. But, um, you know, that's not a huge deal. If you've got the goggles on, you can't see your, uh, you can't really see your phone anyway. Um, generally, I'm pretty happy with it. And the head tracking works really well. The head tilt, it, it creates a new experience as you're flying along to be able to tilt up and down to be able to see um, different views and take live video as you tilt your head. So that's it. 
If you like this video or if you have other suggestions on how the uh, goggles and the Mavic Air work together, please comment below. If you want to see more videos about drones, the Mavic Air and other uh, FPV stuff, please subscribe to Ready Set Drone. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.